Hello and welcome back. This is your host Harshit Sinha continuing with the ESG series with an interesting topic on governance. To make the environmental and social element successful under the ESG as pointed out in my previous presentation, it becomes apparent to look at the intersection of the traditions and the modernity. India's corporate sector is embracing a transformative approach to business, one where the governance component of the ESG framework is emerging as a pillar of trust and sustainability. In the rapidly evolving landscape of business and finance, the concept of environmental, social and governance has emerged as a powerful force reshaping the way organizations operate and stakeholders evaluate their performance. India as a rapidly growing economy and a global stakeholder is at the forefront of this paradigm shift, recognizing the imperative to embedded ESG principle into its governance framework and business practice. In today's business world, governance has become a blueprint for corporate conduct in the array of embedding the ethical practice, transparency and accountability into the DNA of the business. It is the critical element that ensure companies not only aim for profitable but also navigate their growth journey with moral compasses firmly in hand. However, governance, the often overlooked pillar of the ESG triad, is a critical component that underpins the successful implementation and integration of environmental and social initiatives. Strong governance practice ensures that organizations have robust system, process, and structure in place to manage risks, promote transparency, and align their operation with ethical and sustainable principles. Thus today, governance is the cornerstone of the ESG framework in India, acting as the foundation upon which the business can build sustainable and ethical operation. As India continues to carve out its place on the global economic stage, the emphasis on the strong governance practice will undoubtedly play a decisive role in shaping the future of its corporate sector. By prioritizing governance, India businesses are not just committing to growth, but a growth model that is responsible, sustainable and inclusive marking a new chapter in the country illustrates economic story. Now we shall see corporate governance as a concept. The corporate governance framework has evolved over the years adapting changing market condition, regulatory environment and societal expectation. While the specific detail may vary across jurisdiction, the overarching principles of corporate governance emphasize responsible leadership, ethical decision making, risk management, and the protection of stakeholder interest. Effective corporate governance practices are widely recognized as essential for fostering long term business success, maintaining investor confidence, and contributing to overall economic growth and stability. In this regard, Three major revolutionary concepts of corporate governance emerged. The first is the Cadbury Committee established in the United Kingdom in 1991, which played a pivotal role in promoting the corporate governance of best practice. Its report, known as the Cadbury Report, emphasized the importance of accountability, transparency, and the separation of responsibilities between the board of directors and the management. The report introduced the concept of independent non-executive directors and recommended the establishment of audit committee to enhance the financial reporting and internal control mechanism. The second is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development OECD has also been a driving force in corporate governance. In 1999, the OECD released its principle of corporate governance which have become a global recognized benchmark. These principles cover areas such as right and equitability treatment of shareholders, the role of stakeholders, disclosure and transparency, and the responsibility of the board. The OECD principles are regularly reviewed and updated to reflect the emerging best practices and challenges. Equally in India, the Confederation of Indian Industry has played a significant role in promoting the corporate governance practice. The CIIA's Desirable Corporate Governance Code, first introduced in 1998 and subsequently revised guides on issues such as board composition, executive composition, and stakeholder relation. 
The code aims to enhance the transparency, accountability and ethical conduct within the Indian corporation. In this slide, I am highlighting two major definitions of governance that focuses on the system by which companies are directed and controlled encompassing the process, policies and the law that governs the relationship between the various stakeholders, including the stakeholders' management, board of directors and other relevant parties. Several influential bodies have contributed to shaping the principle and practice of corporate governance worldwide. The first definition emphasizes strong ESG governance typically involving the crucial role of the board of directors for strategic direction, monitoring performance and ensuring accountability for ESG matters followed by clear policy, code of conduct and standard operating procedure to guide their approach to ESG issues such as environmental management, human rights and ethical business practices. Besides, well-defined roles, responsibility and reporting lines are established to ensure ESG considerations are integrated into decision-making process and performance is regular monitored and reported. Effective ESG governance involves proactive engagement with the key stakeholders to understand and address their concern and expectation. However, it is equally important to assess the ESG risk management which includes those related to climate change, social impact and governance failure, which are systematically identified, assessed and mitigated through robust risk management process. The second definition emphasizes the board composition and independence, followed by issues related to transparent executive compensation practice and shareholder rights. Ethical conduct and compliance for implementing robust code of conduct, anti-corruption policies and compliance program to promote ethical behavior and adherence to law and regulation and to provide clear and comprehensive disclosure on financial performance, risk management, corporate governance practice and ESG related matters. Besides, effective governance practice aims to balance the interests of various stakeholders ensures accountability, promote long-term value creation, and build trust and credibility with investors, customers, and society at large given much importance. In this slide, we will just briefly discuss meaning and definition of governance. By implementing a strong ESG governance practice, Organizations aim to enhance their overall sustainability performance, build trust and credibility with the stakeholders and create long-term value for their business and society. Taking the lead from this, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has outlined guidelines with nine principles on responsible business conduct, of which three are related to governance that encapsulate good governance practice for business in India. Principle 1 emphasizes integrity, ethics, transparency and accountability as core attributes of corporate governance. This underscores the need for robust internal control, audits, risk monitoring and disclosure policies. Principle 4 highlights that companies must acknowledge the interest of all stakeholders like employees, customers, communities, etc. Governance mechanism should be oriented towards recognizing stakeholders' concern and incorporating them into corporate decision-making and strategy. Principle 7 advises that when engaging with the public policy, companies must do so responsibly and transparently. This expectation of ethical lobbying and advocacy compel governance systems that promote compliance, anti-bribery, and transparent political engagement. Overall, the MCS principle in India affirms the foundation of good governance as integrity, transparency, accountability, and stakeholders' inclusiveness. Aligned governance system empowers and obligates the companies to pursue financial objectives responsible and other six elements which I have already discussed in my previous division strengthen the meaning of governance in ESG. In 
this slide we will try to explore the word governance in ESG with SDGs. The ESG framework especially in context to sustainable development goal for businesses in India is pivotal in steering the corporate sector towards sustainable development. The G in ESG encapsulate a broader spectrum of practice and principle designed to ensure accountability, transparency, responsiveness and broad-based participation among others. This facet of ESG is instrumental in embedding sustainable practices into core of business operation, aligning them with the ambitious targets set by the United Nations SDGs. Governance in realms of ESG goes beyond mere corporate management. It pertains to structures and process that foster accountability, transparency and inclusiveness in decision making. This includes the distribution of rights and responsibility among various stakeholders within the corporate entity such as board of directors, managers, stakeholders and other stakeholders. The focus on the governance is not just about ensuring legal compliance but also about the promoting the ethical business practice that contributes to sustainable economic development. This strategic effort is essential for the growth of economy with a particular emphasis on manufacturing sector which is often at the heart of discussion on industrial sustainability. The integration of governance with SDG presents a two-tied approach to sustainable development. At the industrial level, governance intersects with the several SDGs, notably responsible consumption and production, that is SDG 12, peace, justice, strong institution, that is SDG 16, and partnership for the goal, that is SDG 17. This intersection highlights the importance of governance principle in achieving the sustainable development target. For instance, SDG 12 emphasizes the need for efficient resource use and reduction in waste principle that are closely aligned with the good governance practice such as accountability and transparency in resource management. Corporate governance directed and controlled by governing body of an entity both within and outside of it plays a crucial role in operationalizing the SDGs. Good governance practice ensures that corporations not only pursue their economic objective but also consider the social environmental impact of their operation. This involves adhering to principles that promote equity, empowerment and participation, ensuring that benefits of economic growth are distributed widely and contribute to the overall well-being of the society. In the Indian context, where corporate landscape is as diverse as its culture, the role of governance in ESG became even more critical. Indian business are increasingly recognizing the importance of incorporating ESG principle into their operation, driven by the combination of regulatory pressure, investors' demand, and genuine commitment to sustainable development. The emphasis on governance within this framework ensured that these efforts are grounded in, pra in practice that are not only economically viable but also socially responsible and environmentally sound. Moreover, the focus on governance within the ESG framework of SDGs underscores the interconnectedness of economic growth, social equity and environmental sustainability. By adopting governance practice that prioritize transparency, accountability and inclusiveness, businesses can play a significant role in advancing SDGs, contributing to a sustainable future for all. Overall, the G in ESG in context to SDG for business in India is not just a component of corporate strategy but a fundamental principle that underpins sustainable development. As Indian business continue to evolve in their sustainability journey, the integration of robust governance practice will be the key to achieving the SDGs, making a new array of responsible and sustainable business conduct. Continuing my discussion with the previous slide, it will be worth saying that the governance 
driving India's Sustainable Development Goal success. Achieving the ambitious UN Sustainable Development Goal requires coordinated efforts from government, businesses, and communities. Robust governance mechanism and indispensable to steer national policies and corporate action towards realizing the meaning and importance of sustainable development goals. The 17 SDGs and their 169 target encompasses complex economic, social and environmental objectives like no poverty, zero hunger, good health, quality education, clean water, affordable energy, decent work, reduce inequality, sustainable production, climate action, etc. For government, realizing SDGs necessitates the strategic alignment across budget policies, implementation plan, and monitoring system. Budgets must allocate resources towards priority SDGs programs like health, education, and livelihood. Policies and regulation needs, needs to integrate SDG target through supportive framework for ESG practice, public disclosure, community engagement, and sustainable resource use that minimize harm to the future use of resources. Detail versatile planning or action plan with the assigned responsibility, timelines, and milestones enable execution. Extensive indicators, spanning inputs, outputs, and outcome allow tracking measurable progress rather than superficial efforts. Business also needs governance structure that embedded all 17 SDGs within corporate purpose, strategies, and operation. Leadership Commitment, Sustainability Council and Incentive System that incorporate ESG, KPIs, Orient or Organizational Culture and Behavior towards SDGs. Partnership with civil societies and communities can fill gaps in resources, outreach and expertise. Open communication channel help balance stakeholder interest and co-create solutions. Overall, governance capability in foresight integrated planning, ethical orientation, performance management, and stakeholders coordination are vital for sustainable development. Governance guide reconciling economic growth and ecological sustainable and social equity, the core SDGs challenges. India Robust Governance Initiative can catalyze faster SDG achievement. The NITI IO oversee SDG implementation and monitoring supported by advocacy training and data system. States are formulating aligned policies and action plan. Businesses are also embedding SDG into responsible business conduct practice. With visionary leadership, transparent systems, participative process, and technological innovation, India's public and private governance capabilities are still the country towards achieving the SDGs and establishing the global benchmark. This slide will focus on emphasizing governance to a broader spectrum in ESG. In today's business scenario, both domestic and international investors increasingly weighing governance as a key factor in their investment decision. Companies that exhibit strong governance practice are viewed as beacon of reliability and sound management attracting capital and partnership that fuel not only the financial growth but also societal progresses. This trend underscores the evolving nature of the investment perspective where sustainability and ethics are critical as financial returns. So now two main components encompasses the governance of listed business entities at macro level. In the evolving paradigm of a corporate responsibility, the ESG financial and economic aspect denoted as ESG in bracket F and E provide a more holistic view and sustainability in business operation. This expanded framework not only emphasizes the environmental stewardship and social responsibility, but also underlines the critical roles of the financial status and economic progress aligned closely with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, largely dependent on the strategic management under the governance of individual entities. The F in 
ESG pertains to the financial status of entities, a critical determinant in assessing a company's eligibility for financial assistance and investment. The analysis of an entity's financial health begins with scrutinizing its total turnover, which offers insight into the industry's statutory and sustainability potential. This evaluation extends over the base year, typically the last three to five years, examining the expense under the various categories as per the standard classification of the finance audit system adapted by Republic of India. Such financial scrutiny is indispensable as it lays the groundwork for understanding a company's capability to engage in sustainable practice and its resilience against economic downturn. The E in ESG signifies economic progress defined as enhanced capacity of an industry to produce goods and services of higher value using the same or equivalent resources. This aspect of ESG framework is intricately linked to sustainable development as it encompasses healthy production and sales figures, industrial innovation and partnership that drive forward economic sustainability. Economic progress as analyzed in this context directly supports the achievement of specific SDGs highlighting the importance of sustainable economic growth as a driver for overall development. The inclusion of the financial status and economic progress within the governance framework directly coded with the several SDGs including Goal 8 Decent Work and Economic Growth Goal 9 Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure and Goal 17 Partnership for the Goal. These connections underscore the necessity of the robust financial foundation and continuous economic innovation for achieving sustainable development by fostering industrial growth that is both economically viable and socially responsible. Business can significantly contribute building a sustainable future. Thus, in context to India, ESG framework offers a comprehensive approach to sustainability that transcends environmental and social consideration to include financial and economic dimension. This broader perspective is crucial for addressing the unique challenge and leveraging the opportunity within India's dynamic economic landscape. By integrating financial status and economic progress into the governance of business practice, Companies can ensure that their growth is not only financially sound but also contribute to the broader goal of sustainable development as outlined by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In doing so, businesses can forge a path towards a future where the economic prosperity, social equity and environmental sustainability are intersectly linked creating lasting value for all stakeholders involved. Now we shall discuss the major international development of corporate governance. The corporate governance has witnessed significant development at the international level driven by the various influential organizations and their initiatives. In this regard, the Cadbury Committee report this report led the foundation for the modern corporate governance principle emphasizing the importance of accountability, transparency and the separation of responsibilities between the board and the management. It introduced the concept of independent and non-executive director and recommended the establishment of audit committee. This is followed up by the OECD principle of corporate governance. These principles developed by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development have become a globally recognized benchmark for corporate governance best practices. They cover areas such as shareholder rights, stakeholders' rules, disclosure of transparency, and board responsibility. The Sarbanes Oxley Act and take in response to major corporate scandals, SOX aimed to restore public trust in corporate governance and financial reporting. It introduced stringent requirement for auditor independence, enhanced financial disclosure, and established personal responsibility for corporate executive. The Global Reporting Initiative, GRI Standards, launched in 2000, 
The GRI provides a comprehensive set of standards and guides for organizations to report on their economic, environmental, and social impact. The GRI standards have become widely adopted framework for sustainability reporting and disclosure. International Integrated Reporting Council, established in 2010, the IIRC promotes the concept of integrated reporting, which combines financial and non financial information to provide a holistic view of an organization's performance strategy and value creation over time. United Nations Guiding Principle on Business and Human Rights The UNGP provides a global standard for preventing and addressing the risk of adverse human rights impact linked to the business activity. They outline the corporate responsibility to respect the human rights and the need for effective governance and due diligence process. Last but not the least, the while the other regional level contribution of various international reports have shaped corporate governance practice worldwide, promoting transparency, accountability, ethical conduct, and the integration of environmental, social, and governance consideration into business strategic and decision making process is also an important step. Continuing my discussion from the previous slide, now we shall discuss the major national level development of corporate governance. In India, the journey towards good corporate governance practice began with a small step taken up by the Confederation of Indian Industry. In 1996, the CII released the first voluntary code corporate governance, highlighting the importance of transparency, accountability, and ethical business practice for Indian companies. These initial efforts by CII paved the way of various committees to be constituted by regulatory bodies and industrial associations to provide recommendations on strengthening corporate governance norms. Notable among these were Kumar Mangalam Birla Committee, appointed by the Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI. This committee recommends the implementation of corporate governance practice in listed companies such as appointment of independent directors, the establishment of audit committee and enhanced disclosure. Another is related Naresh Chandra committee constituted by Ministry of Corporate Affairs. This committee reviewed various aspects of corporate governance and suggested measures to improve transparency, accountability and stakeholder protection. Other was related with the Narayan Murthy Committee formed by SEBI. This committee provided recommendation for enhancing corporate governance practice, including the role of independent directors, audit committees, and related party transition. These committees highlighted the significance of constituting the corporate board in a manner that would enable them to manage the affair the company with a greater accountability and transparency. These initiatives led the foundation for subsequent regulatory reforms and adoption of comprehensive corporate governance practice by Indian companies aligning them with the global best practice while considering the unique challenge and opportunities of the Indian business landscape. Now before I discuss the role and initiative taken up by the MCA and SEBI and their allied bodies, let us compare the progress of governance regulation with the introduction of ESG governance the protocol. The slide gives a detailed overview of the progress of regulation related to corporate governance and environmental, social and governance factors in India. It highlights the key developments and initiatives taken by various regulatory bodies, industry associations and international organizations over the years. The journey of corporate governance regulation began with SEBI introducing the substantial acquisition of share and takeover regulation in 1997 to promote transparency and fairness in acquisition and takeover. The Confederation of Indian Industry released the Desirable Corporate Governance Accord in 1998 providing voluntary guidelines. SEBI Clause 49 of Listing Agreement in 2000 
mandates the listed company to disclose corporate governance and practices. Several committees such as the Naresh Chandra Committee in 2002 and Narayan Murthy Committee in 2003 provided recommendations to enhance governance practice. Save revise clause 49 in 2004 introducing requirement like independent directors and code of conduct. Ministry of Corporate Affairs released the draft companies bill in 2004 to update corporate laws. The Companies Act of 2013 was a significant milestone introducing comprehensive governance requirement including provision for independent directors, board committees, auditor independence and enhanced disclosure. CBI aligned its regulation with the new act further strengthen the governance norm for listed companies. While the progress of governance in ESG for India has seen a steady evolution driven by the various regulatory and voluntary initiatives, here an overview of the key development regarding the progress of ESG governance. The MCA issued national voluntary guideline (NVGs) on corporate social responsibility in 2009. providing a framework for responsible business practice the united nation human rights council endorsed the guiding principle for business and human rights in 2011 outlining responsibilities for respecting human rights cbi introduced the business responsibility report in 2012 mandating it disclosure for listed companies and expanded its scope over time the company acts of 2013 formalized the csr regulation requiring companies to allocate profits for csr activity india aligned its policy with the united nation sustainable development goal in 2016 promoting sustainable development across sector the mca released guideline on social environmental and economic responsible of business in 2018 and national guideline responsible business conduct in 2019 aligned with the international standards efforts were made to link the global reporting initiative gri standards with sebi the brr framework in 2022 promoting harmonized esg reporting while in 2023 the balanced framework for esg disclosure rating and investing aim to standardize and enhance the esg disclosure and investment practice The development of regulation of governance along with the introduction of the governance charter in the ESG framework of India demonstrate the India's commitment to promoting transparency, accountability, ethical conducts and sustainable business practice while aligning with the global standards and addressing the unique challenges and opportunities of India's business scenario. Well, this slide discusses the regulatory framework on corporate governance in India. For our country, a comprehensive framework has been established to promote and enforce the robust corporate governance standards, driven by the efforts of the various regulatory bodies and professional institutions. Abandoned with the framework are the four pillars of corporate governance: people, process, performance, and purpose. which collectively uphold the integrity and sustainability of business practices within environmental social and governance framework at the forefront the organizational framework of the corporate governance initiatives in india consists of two main bodies one is the ministry of corporate affairs that is known to be as mca and the security of exchange board of india known to be sebi sebi monitors and regulate the corporate governance of the listed companies in india Two clause forty nine, while the MCA deals largely with the corporate affairs governance, with its quasi bodies such as ICSI, ICAI, and NFCG. I shall explain in brief the role of each pillar of the corporate governance. The first comes with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs plays a pivotal role in shaping and enforcing corporate governance norms in India. As the nodal agency responsible for drafting and amending the corporate law. The MCA has consistently updated the company that to keep the pace and evolving government's governance standards and global best practices. It issues clarification circulars and notification to ensure effective implementation and compliance with the corporate governance 
Since regulation, the MCA also constitutes various committee and task force to study and provide recommendations on emerging corporate governance issue. This recommendation serves as a guidance for companies to adopt best practices and stay ahead of the curve. Additionally, the MCA organizes the training program, workshop, and seminar to enhance the awareness understanding of corporate governance practice among the directors, professionals, and stakeholders. Monitoring and enforcement are the key aspect of MCA mandate. It has authority to initiate the disciplinary action and impose penalties for non-compliance or violation of the corporate governance regulation. The MCA also collaborates with the international organization and participates in the global forum to align Indian corporate practice with the international standard and the best practices. The second is complementary the Companies Act is the Security and Exchange Board of India which regulates the responsible for overseeing the corporate governance practice of the listed companies. SEBI guidelines known as the Listing Obligation and Disclosure Loda, regulations mandate a range of disclosure and compliance requirements aimed at promoting transparency and protecting investors' interest. One of the same significant contribution to corporate governance has been the revision clause 49 now incorporated into LODR regulation. This revised clause has redefined the criteria of independent directors, strengthened the responsibility of audit committee, and mandate the formal codes of conduct for companies. It has also stringent requirement for CEO and CFO certification of financial statement ensuring that, that the top management bears direct responsibility for accuracy and integrity of the financial reporting. Now I shall give you a brief about the other quasi bodies which some or the other way are linked with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. The Institute of Company Secretaries of India ICSI and the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India ICAI play a crucial role in promoting and advocating the corporate governance practice in the country. The ICSI has issued a secretarial standard and guidance note to guide companies on the various aspects of the corporate governance such as board meeting, general meeting and meeting about the dividends. Additionally, it conducts various programs and confers the ICSI National Award for Excellence in Corporate Governance to recognize and encourage companies that exemplify best practices. The ICAI, on the other hand, provides a high quality accounting standard to reduce the uncertainty and increase overall efficiency and investor confidence. The accounting standard issued by the ICAI covers areas such as disclosure of accounting policies, valuation of in inventories, amalgamation and interim financial reporting, related party disclosure and more. These standards ensure consistency, transparency and comparability in financial reporting which is a cornerstone of effective corporate governance. The National Foundation of Corporate Governance established by the MCA in partnership with the industry body and professional institute acts as a nodal agency for involving corporate governance principles in India. Its objectives include creating awareness about the importance of the good governance practice, encouraging research in the field, collaborating with the regulatory authorities and private sector and aligning with the global standard and practices. This multifaceted corporate governance framework in India is a testament to the country's commitment to promoting the ethical responsible business practice. It provides a robust set guidelines, regulation and standards that companies must adhere to ensure that they operate with the integrity, transparency and accountability towards all stakeholders. By mandating stringent disclosure requirement, strengthening the role of the independent directors and emphasizing the corporate social responsibility, this framework encourages companies to go beyond mere profit seeking and contribute to the broader goal of sustainable development, environmental protection and societal well-being. Moreover, the framework emphasizes on the shareholder democracy, minority shareholder protection, foster an environment of trust and 
confidence in the Indian corporate sector attracting both domestic and foreign investment. It sends a strong signal that the companies operating in India prioritize good governance, which is essential for long-term growth and value creation. In a rapidly globalizing business environment, where corporate scandals and governance failure can have a far-reaching consequences, India's comprehensive corporate governance framework serves as a bulwark against the unethical practice and a beacon of transparency and accountability. It not only strengthens the foundation of the Indian economy, but also positions the country as a responsible and progressive player on the global stage, setting an example for the other emerging market to follow. This is the last slide of this presentation, which will be highlighting why governance matters to investors in ESG. With the advent of ESG, there is a lot of formation related to the word governance. Then guess what could be the reason for it? I tell you now, investors are associated deeply in the business perspective with the emergence of ESG, making business with the responsibility a core concept for sustainable growth. Governance is a pivotal of ESG investing in India as the governance is a key factor for investors assessing Indian companies on ESG parameters as it indicates how ethical, accountable and transparently a firm operates. The G covers how business decisions are made across the ecosystem from governmental policy to allocation rights and duties amongst the corporate board, management, shareholders and stakeholders. A strong governance system allows investors to identify Indian companies mitigating ESG risk through appropriate accountability, disclosure, and compliance practice. Governance indicate demonstrate the integration of ethics, regulation, and stakeholders' interests just as the environmental and the social aspect. ESG reporting framework mandate that Indian companies reveal governance details like anti bribery policy, ethical lobbying, board independence, audit committees, and stakeholder engagements. Assessment also gauge whistleblower, protection insider, trading control, and executive pay linkage to sustainability target. A robust governance assists investors in avoiding Indian companies with a higher financial risk due to irresponsible environmental or social conduct. For instance, a lack of emission control often signals broader misgovernance that can negatively impact profitability. However, adopting the sound governance in India has challenges like climate change, environmental harm, energy overuse, expanding regulation, and demographic shift requiring ethical strategies. Data privacy and security issues also necessitate the stringent cybersecurity governance. So far, I have discussed the evaluation, importance, meaning, definition, system of governance, and the pillar of governance with the concern of the investors in promoting the concept of the responsible business in the existing India. In my next presentation, I shall elaborate on the elements of the governance, where ultimate governance play a crucial role in the emergence of the ESG, making the business with responsibility a core concept for sustainable growth and with the commercial profit-making activity. So, stay tuned next week to discuss this interesting topic. Till then, bye-bye.